I'll tell you what I tell parents when they ask me, you know, are you concerned about letting them have freedom with screens? No, I'm not in this environment. And right, here's right. why I, here's <laughs> what, how I tell it to parents. There is a huge difference between the child who is uptight, scared, depressed, you know, having all the frozen because they're so afraid of the teacher, having mm -hmm. ashamed, having all those negative feelings in the school, then running home, turning on video games and getting right into it. That child might be at risk of addiction. That child is using it. You know, in the early drug culture, we use the term fix. The drugs were mm -hmm. a fix. That child might be using video games, social media as a fix to fix mm -hmm. those feelings because he or she doesn't know how to deal with those feelings because they're not acknowledged at traditional school. Right, right. Very, very different process from kids in Sudbury schools. And right, interestingly right. that you bring up the thinking, because I heard a very similar conversation to the catastrophic thinking issue with a couple of boys when about a month ago, they're playing a video game and he's like, yeah, but he's reacting. You know, he's like, there's only one way. There are a hundred ways. And it was, you know, they get that because mm -hmm. they use social media and video games very differently. They use them socially. They interact socially. They're not using them to suppress negative feelings because they deal with those feelings and then they use them as fun, which is a very right. different process, a totally different experience than the kid who runs home and has to get on. So I have a hard time with these people who are researching social media per se because they're not right acknowledging how or where or why it's being used. And to exactly. me, what I have seen over the years in Sudbury schools, that's vitally important. I can honestly say I have not seen a kid that I would call addicted to social media or uh, gaming in a Sudbury school. And I have exactly. co-founded three and you know, oh, been staff yeah. for 15 years here and for several years in Florida and haven't seen it. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I hear that, but my concern is that with everything that the education system does, they're always, ex so they're blaming something else. Remember, it's always right. the kid, it's not the school. That's it's right. always right. the social media. It's not the school. It's all it's it's always that process, not our process. We're the educators and there are some wonderful educators. We all know that, but they're in a system that requires them to live like this. Right. It requires right. it. So unless we totally transform that system, it will continue to have the dysfunctional, hurtful, problematic emotions experienced by 99% of the people who've come through it. Right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Burr.